thanks for stopping and checking out this photo manipulation that I'm going to be showing you how I did in this video. This is a World War II portrait featuring Clint Eastwood. And this really shows you the power of using your own models in photo manipulation. Uh, I got tired of, of having a vision of something I wanted to create and always going out and trying to find assets that fit that vision. And when I come across using models, it really increased my ability to create the type of images that I was interested in. And obviously Clint Eastwood is not going to come and let me photograph him. And so using models is the second best thing. So in this case, I'm using a Ficine or TB League one six scale model. I was able to find a one six scale head sculpt of Clint and then these clothes, the gun, the helmet, I was able to buy off of eBay. The Jeep is a 125th scale standard model uh, that I built, painted, and distressed to use as the background. So let's go ahead and get started. And if you'd like to have these assets, just drop a comment and I will make them available for you to download. So I've just started here by creating a background layer and using the paint bucket tool, I've colored it with A66E01. And that's going to create the tonality that's gonna to go through uh, our, our whole photo manipulation as we start to add layers. So the next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my tree layer and just take that down here and then I'm gonna right click, hit distort and drag these trees up to the top. And then I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply. And this allows this color to bleed up through that tree layer, colorize it, and set the overall tone and personality uh, that we're going to have in this image. So I want to add a couple of lighting effects. So I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to call this glow. And let me find my color. We're going to go use FFA800. Uh, go to my brush. Make sure it's soft. Set to 100% opacity. Make it pretty big. And I'm going to click twice. And then I'm going to con hit Control T. Right click and hit Distort. And then I'm just going to pull that down on an angle. So it just looks like this beam of light coming through the background here. Then I'm going to add a mask and make this a bit smaller. And I'm just going to kind of mask away that hard line that was created. Okay, now we're going to repeat this step. So I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to hit glow two and let me find the color use ffd88c use a little smaller brush than i used the first time couple of clicks control t same thing oh Right click, distort, pull that down through like that. And there you have kind of this cool sun ray that's coming through the image. 
So now we're going to start adding our front forward assets, I guess we'd call them. I'm going to put the Jeep in place here. And you can, you can use your arrow keys to kind of fine tune where you place things. Okay, check that. Now I'm going to sharpen this. So I'm going to create a, a layer by just pulling that down to the plus, this, this layer down to the plus, or I could hit Control J. And then I'm going to go up to Filter, and I'm going to go to Other, and I'm going to go to High Pass. And the setting of this affects the way it sharpens. And it, there's no precise number. Every image is a little bit different depending on the image quality, you know, pixels, that type of thing. Um, but for this one, right around 9.8 looks pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit the blending mode to overlay. And you can see how much clearer these numbers are. And I want to do it even more. So I'm actually just going to copy this layer to add a double sharpening. And you can see how it's even done that even more. And now to bring this Jeep more into line with the coloring of the background, I'm going to add a color balance. And I'm going to set red up to around 28, magenta down around 7, and yellow down around here, around 27, just to get that more in the cone. And then let me make sure it's a clipping mask. And so you can click right here. Or you can hit the Alt key and come right here and click and make that a clippy mask so that, that this effect will only affect this layer. Okay, now we're at, ready to add Clint here. We're going to need to make him bigger. I'm going to hit Z, bring up the uh, zoom key, and hit fit to screen. And that looks pretty good, having him sitting there. Now I'm going to come right here, right below him, hit a layer. And I'm going to do some shadowing. Make that shadow. Hit D to turn that back into black and white. Or you can hit this right here. Uh, brush. I want this opacity to that be down around there. Make this brush smaller, and then I'm just going to put a few strokes of color down along the edge here that would represent kind of the way he would be sitting on that Jeep. And it is, it's amazing with photo manipulations how important shadowing is to selling the effect and something just as simple as that adds so much to uh, the b believability of an image okay the next thing i want to do is i want to 
light his cigar, and so I'm going to add a new layer above Clint here. I'm going to call this light. And the color I'm going to use is this color, B45500. Make sure my brush is back up to 100%. And then I'm just going to color the end of that like that, and then hit the blending mode to color dodge. And that really is pretty cool how that does that, looking like that's a, a lit cigar. I'm going to pick a, a smoke brush, same color as, uh, oh, sorry, I need to add a new layer. Let's call this smoke. Click that. And then I'm just going to rotate it a bit, reposition it to kind of get it out of its face. And then I'm going to drop the opacity just a bit like that. Down to around 80, 85, 86, something like that. Now I'm going to go back down to the Clint layer and I'm going to add some brightness and contrast and I'm just going to really bump this contrast up pretty high and again let's make sure that that's a clipping mask and bounce that up to around 60 or so just to bring out some you notice how that uh, brings out a lot of depth by by doing that Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to, you know, colorize him to fit with the background. And so I'm going to add a clipping mask. And so I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to call this um, color. And I'm going to right click on this and create clipping mask. And then find the color that I'm using. And use the paint bracket tool and and then just going to go down to soft light and lower the opacity right about there looks pretty good okay now because we have this light coming in here i want to enhance kind of the lighting that's coming into him. And so I'm going to create another clipping mask and uh, create clipping mask. I'm kind of going to call this rim light. And then the color I'm going to use for that is this lighter yellow. Use our paint bracket tool. And then I'm going to add a mask. And then I'm going to hit Control I to hide the effect. Now what I want to do is select my white here. And I can hit X or I can hit this, these arrows here. Uh, I want the opacity to be pretty low. Brush. Opacity pretty low. Standard brush. 
using my bracket keys to make it smaller and I'm just painting here areas that make sense that that, that glow is impacting. And let's see how that looks. So subtle, but it makes a big difference overall in setting the scene. Now I'm going to add some global uh, coloring by going to selective color. and go up to yellows and i'm going to set cyan around 23 24 magenta up around 11 and this is all taste of, of just what you're after taste wise and then i'm going to darken it up a titch Again, just to add a little more contrast down around 14, 15. Then I'm going to go to neutrals and bump up the cyan a little bit. Or actually drop that down just a hair. Magenta up to about four or five. Yellow up again around four or five and black up a little bit to yellow. And that's really brought that into the tone that, that uh, I'm after, that I think looks really, really good. So we're pretty much done here. This is uh, kind of where I, I throw my, what I call the 90-10 rule, where I'm basically done, and then a lot of times I'll go and experiment with different filters, go into camera raw filter, uh, use some of those filters. Color lookups are very powerful for how they can affect the overall image and really fun to play with. But in this case, uh, I've, I have the knit collection and I'm going to actually finish this off by applying a filter from the knit collection. So I'm gonna create a stamp which is a copy of all my layers merged into one layer. And I'm gonna do that by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And then I'm gonna to go to Filter, Knit Collection, Color Effects Pro. And I'm in the recipes here. And a recipe that I use fairly frequently is super punch and it adds a lot of detail and kind of a dodge and burn effect that uh, i really really like as a finished product here so i'm going to hit okay and finish this portrait of Clint Eastwood in a World War II scene. And I really appreciate anyone who has watched the entire video. I hope maybe you've learned a couple things that you can use in your own photo manipulations. And we will hopefully talk to you in the future in some of my other tutorials. Thanks again for watching.